Hey there, I'm your host, Lissoui, and in today's video, I will show you how you can create an equipment system. So let me demonstrate what you'll get out of this series. By pressing a key of our choice, we get the equipment system pop up on our screen, of course, with our player character in here. On the left hand side, we have our character sheet. And in here, you can have things such as your attributes, abilities, skills, stuff like that. Then in the middle, of course, it's our player character with some equipment slots. And on the right, we get our inventory system. And this, of course, is compatible with the inventory system I've made before. So you can go ahead and combine those if you wish to do so. And these are just uh, dummy buttons to simulate that inventory system. So our player attributes we get from equipping these items. And each item has some defense and strength that would add in here. Then these, for example, uh, would be divided and you would get your armor class. So we have 22 defense, and I'm dividing this by five, so we get four armor class. And same with our weapon damage. If you have strength of five, that will be divided by five, which is one, and we get one bonus damage to our sword or our bow. And with that, if you have any abilities, you can of course add them in here. I didn't, so I did this instead. But of course, if you do, you can add them in here. <laughs> And with that, let's show off some of the equipment slots. So in here, if you have hair, you can add it in. If you don't, you don't have to. And of course, these don't really have anything. It just shows you zero, zero. But of course, you can add some attributes here as well. In here, we then have our beard, which we can add as well. Some accessories, we can take this off if you want. And with the items, if we had nothing equipped, and then went to right click on the shirt, it would tell us plus five strength and plus five defense, because that's what I added to each shirt. So um, let's put a shirt back on or a jacket, and we can see these increase. Then for the legs, the same thing applies. If I went to right click, it shows me minus five defense because I'm de-equipping the item. And in here, of course, is zero, zero. So if we switch this, then again, plus five. So let's equip that. With the items, we get Spirit Bow, and we have Weapon Damage, so 15, and then the Attributes. Same with this, but of course, it's kind of not classified as a weapon, so you don't really get anything uh, like the Weapon Damage in there. So let's de-equip this, let's also de-equip that, and let's save our game. So let's exit out of this, press Z to save game. If we come back, now we can see our character is totally changed, just like that. So I think this is pretty much it for the functionality. And with that said, let's begin. Before we start, we are going to need some character assets in order to create this equipment system. I'll be using the stylized character kit that I believe you can get for free on Epic Games. So go ahead and add this to your project. All right, so once you have that done, we then want to get some images. Now, I've already imported a few, so we have our empty slots in here. We have our equipment slots of our items, our weapons, and then the other, such as the non and our armor class shield. Now, I'll show you how you can take screenshots of your items. So let's go ahead and do that first. So let's open up our content drawer, go to our models from our character kit, and let's say we wanted to get the, get the beard, right? We'll put that in here. You want to select this object and then you want to type in render on your right hand side and scroll down until you see something called a render custom depth pass. Now you want this to be checked. Then with that selected, we go to the three lines on the left top. Go to high resolution screenshot. This is your multiplier. So I typically do two for that and we want to use the custom depth as mask. And this is the result we get. You can capture this. It will show you the location where it is. And that's that. So with this method, you can take your screenshots of your items and you're good to go. OK, so let's get started. Let's open up our content drawer and go to our character, which for me is going to be the third person character. Now in here, we want to go to the viewport and we want to click on the mesh. Now this mesh in here will be the leader component for all of our other skeletal meshes. So what we want to do in here is we want to give it the head. So let's scroll up, find the head. Whoops not the body, the head. And for the animation class, we want to select the third person underscore anim BP. And this is the result we get. Now with that, we want to select the mesh, which is our character mesh zero, 
and we want to add all of the skeletal meshes that will be a part of our system. So I already know I'm supposed to add eight. So I'll go ahead and add eight. That's three. And make sure to select the mesh every time. Otherwise, the hierarchy will be different. That's five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. Or is it one, two? Oh, I've added a static mesh. We don't want that. So let's go ahead and add another skeletal mesh. Okay. So I like to add them first and then name them. So we'll go ahead and name this first. So press F2 to rename. And this will be our hair. Then next we'll have our facial hair. We'll have our accessory. We want our torso, our hands, our legs, of course. And then we have options for our melee and arranged weapons. So melee weapon and our ranged weapon, like so. So once you have all of them named, you can actually go ahead and add something in there. Now, of course, for hair, facial hair and accessory, I'll leave this blank. For torso, we want to add how it's going to look like when we have nothing on. So this is what we want. Don't worry about this being weird for now. We'll change it in just a second. But for hands, we want to do the same. And probably for the legs. And that's all we have to do. There we go. So this is looking extremely weird right now. But if we go to the construction script, in here, we then want to grab our mesh and do set leader host component and drag this into the new leader bone component. Now, for the other items that are part of this mesh, you want to drag into the target. Now, I'm doing this in order because all of our items are going to have an index. So hair is, is index zero, facial hair is index one, and so on. And this index is going to represent the category that we have. So that's the reason I'm doing it this way. So let's go ahead and add all of them in here. Hair, facial hair, accessory, torso, and legs, melee weapon, and our ranged weapon. So let's go ahead and plug them in then. All right, so with this done, if we compile and save and you go to the viewport, this then should look like that. And we can test this out. So let's go ahead and play the game. Boom, it's working. Now, as you can see, you might get these weird little shadows. Now, I'm not sure exactly why, but a quick fix is to go to your settings, project settings, and look for shadows and select the shadow map method to be shadow maps. Now, this might mess with some of your other shadows, so be warned, but these uh, shadows here should be fixed. Okay, next, let's head back into our player character again. And in here, we want to add a variable for our player name. So player name, and we'll make this a text. We want this because we'll be needing a name for our equipment system. With this finished, let's compile and save, and we can then minimize this window. And the next step would be to create a new folder called the equipment system, equipment underscore system. And in here, we'll add our categories. So right click, go to blueprint and create a enumeration. Call this E underscore equipment category. And let's open this up. And in here, essentially, you're just adding a category for every single skeletal mesh that you added in order. So. Let's go ahead and do that. So we had eight goes from zero to seven. That's eight. And we'll start with hair. We had facial, facial hair. We had accessory torso then. Hands, legs, our melee weapon and our ranged weapon. Cool. Let's save that then and exit this. And the next part would be to right click and go to blueprint and create a structure for our items. So let's call this S underscore equipment info. And in here, you just want to lay out how everything is going to look like. So let's add a few categories. And the first one we want is the name. 
we then want to know the category it belongs to. So equipment category. We want to know the item image. We want to know the mesh it's supposed to have. So the skeletal mesh, then perhaps the material, if you'll be changing color, ugh, colors, material. Um, we then want to get the attributes. We want the weapon damage. Add a few more. We want to know to, 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 to the weapon type. So is it a melee? Is it a weapon at all? Weapon type. And finally, the item amount. So your max stack. So perhaps let's call it max stack. Right. Then for the name, this will be a text. For our equipment category will be the enumeration we just made. So E underscore equipment category. For image, it's a texture 2D. There we are. Object reference. Mesh is simply a skeletal mesh like that. Object reference. Material, once again. For this, what you want to do is we can do a material Oops, that got deleted. Material instance, or not instance, interface. Is it called? There we are. Material interface is what you want. Object reference. Then for your attributes, we need to create a few structures. So let's go back in here. Right click and go to structure. And we'll call this S underscore attributes. Double click on that and in here we'll add our attributes. Now, of course, I'll have my defense attribute and let's actually do a TTR or attribute underscore defense. And we'll do the same for our strength. And make these floats or integers. I simply prefer integers to have full values and save that. So we can go ahead and add this in here then S underscore attributes. There we are. So we do the same for the weapon damage and the weapon type. So right click, go to blueprint, structure, S underscore weapon damage. And for the weapon damage, we want to know our melee damage. And then our ranged damage. And my mouse is loading for some reason. Okay. And we'll make this integers as well. Save that and add it in here s underscore weapon damage okay and then for the weapon type these will be booleans so we'll go ahead and create another structure called s underscore weapon type the first check we want to do is is it a weapon so is weapon this could be true or false then we'll have our is melee and is ranged. Technically, we don't need is ranged, but you never know. Might need it in the future. So let's save that then and add it into here. S underscore weapon type. And for the max stack, this will simply be a integer. So this is how it's supposed to look like. Let's go ahead and save that. Now, the next thing you can do is you can either go ahead, right click, go to miscellaneous and create a data table for this structure, so equipment info, press OK, and we'd name it DT underscore equipment data. And in here, you'd have to fill out everything manually for every single item that you have. Now, I went ahead and created a data table in Excel. So you want to save it as a CSV, and then you can import it into your project. And that will just save you a lot of hassle of having to create rows, uh, name your items, and all that stuff. So I'll switch to when I have this imported. OK, so I'm back with the data table imported, and it looks exactly like our S underscore equipment info. So we have the name, equipment, image, and so on, except all of the row names are already created. Now, for the row name, that's your unique handle per item. So it's up to you how you design it. I think this is a good way of having it, so then you know which item is which. Now, the next part would be to fill these out. So if we clicked on hair 00, that's our default hair. It's not supposed to have a skeletal mesh. Therefore, we're not going to add one in. But what we do want to add is the image. 
So for the image, we'll do none like that. And if you wanted to, you could go ahead and add some attributes and things like that. Now for the max stack, we would have to put one in every single one in here. So I think a easier way is to go into our structure, go to default values and make the max stack default one anyways. So let's save that. And of course, if you wanted to change, you still could change it to five in here if you wanted to. But by default, it's going to be one. OK, so with that out of the way, that's our first item. Now, then for hair zero one, you want to add a skeletal mesh and a material. So for the image, this is our black hairstyle one. So if I search for black, uh, maybe hair, I don't remember what I named it. There we are. Hairstyle zero one. And we can see that this is the black one, the black hair. So for the mesh, once again, this is the mesh that corresponds to this hair. And for the material, we want to add the material, which I believe we could find in the pack uh, textures or not materials and material instances. And this is the black hair here, I believe. Yeah, this one here. So we would open this up a little bit. It might seem a little bit confusing and yes, it is. But let's drag that in here anyways. OK, so that's our first item created. And you want to go ahead and do this for every single item that you're going to have for your game. Now, again, if you have something like facial hair zero zero in here, of course, you're not adding anything because it's not supposed to have a skeletal mesh for the image. Yes, go ahead, add one in. So we'll do one again, none. For the torso, though, uh, we want to add something in because you don't want to have an invisible body. So let's go ahead and find the torso in here, of course. You would have your non image and then for the mesh, you would have your uh, torso. So let's go ahead and find that. And you don't have to put in the material. It's going to know which material is there. But if you want, uh, you can. I think maybe it's a good idea to even do that. So materials. And now you just got to figure out which one's the torso. So I think this stands for head and this stands for legs. This should be torso. So go ahead and fill all of these out and I'll be back with you when this is finished. All right. So now all of this has been filled out. So as you can see for yourselves, we have hair filled out, torsos, hands and all that good stuff. Now you can go ahead and fill out the attributes as well. So I did that for a few of the items. Now, of course, weapon damage would only go for the spirit sword and the spirit bow I have in here. But you do you essentially fill everything out and you're good to go. So this will be everything for part one. In part two, we'll be creating the wardrobe actor and adding something onto our screen. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. And as always, happy developing.